Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video we are going to enjoy another magnificent attacking game played by the magician from Riga Mikhail Tal. His opponent is Soviet chess player Konstantin Klaman and the game was played in 1957 at URS Championship. Klaman participated at URS Championships twice, the first one in 1947 and this is his second and last participation at the tournament. At the time of this game, Mikhail Tal was only 20 years old and he opened up with e4. Klaman responded with Sicilian defense and as you know, when Tal is facing Sicilian defense, the game usually ends up in the most spectacular way. Knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, d6. We have the good old classical Sicilian and bishop g5. Tal is going for Richter Rouser attack. A very sharp line which usually leads to double edged positions. Bishop d7, queen d2. After which we have the exchange of knights on d4, queen a5 and bishop takes f6. Later in 1972 Mikhail Tal would have this position again in a game against Radulov and would prefer bishop d2. But in our game we have bishop takes f6, so Tal is doubling up black pawns on the f-file, but of course there is nothing wrong with black's position. This powerful shield later is going to protect black king successfully. Usually black is leaving his king in the center, he's even putting on e7. Rook c8 f4, rook g8, g3, e6, and we have bishop h3. Of course, capturing on f6 is not good because of this bishop g7, and if queen g5, then after the exchange of queens on g5, bishop takes c3. White is getting a very unpleasant pawn structure. Weaknesses are all over the board. That's why in our game after e6, we have bishop h3, queen c5, black is offering the exchange of queens, but of course Tal is rejecting, b5, meanwhile black proceeds with his attack, and rook e1, b4, knight e2, queen c4, we have a double attack, Tal played king b1, and black won the pawn on e4. Well, this is a very risky move and is allowing white to get nice attacking chances. Instead, it was better simply to proceed with the development. This is safer and more solid, but in our game we have queen takes e4. Here comes knight d4, queen b7, queen d3. Tal is coming after the pawn on h7. And strangely, black decided to give up that pawn by playing bishop e7. Instead, it was better to play rook h8. If knight f5, then queen c7. But in our game, after queen d3, we have bishop e7, and Tal simply munched the pawn on h7. Rook f8, and bishop g4. Tal wants to play bishop h5, pin the pawn, can even go for moves like knight takes f6. That's why black played queen c7. But instead of going for a move like bishop h5, Tal first decided to make a prophylactic move and played king a1. In some lines, when playing a move like bishop h5 or knight f5, Tal is not allowing black to win the c pawn with a check. A subtle prophylactic move to which black answered with a mistake and played f5. This is losing on the spot, instead it was better to proceed with the attack, for example play a5. And this bishop h5 is actually not dangerous, black can play queen c4. But in our game after king a1 we have f5. By the way, if you remember a similar structure we have already seen in a game played between Mikhail Tal and Burkhard Malic. In that game Tal managed to break into pieces this solid formation in a beautiful style, but after Tal's king a1 it was Black who decided to move this wall, played f5, and that's like asking Tal to go for a sacrifice, and Tal did. He went for bishop takes f5. I just can't understand what's gone wrong in Kalama's calculations. Probably he overlooked the upcoming Rook sacrifice, yes guys, in here this time Tal played rook takes e7 check, an exchange sacrifice which is leaving black king defenseless, rook e1 check, king d8, queen h4 check, 
f6 and queen h6 and it turns out that there is no safe square for black rook. If rook f7 then queen h8 check is coming and what are you going to do with these two vulnerable squares? Kalaman played queen a5 and at the same time sets a conic trap. The idea of queen a5 is that now if you play queen takes f8 then black can play king c7 and if you move like queen takes f6 then black has b3 move. Well of course Tal saw all this and after queen a5 instead of hurrying and munching the rook on f8 he made this intermediate knight b3 move, blocked the b pawn's path and attacked black queen. Queen d5 was played and only now Tal captured the rook. Queen takes f8 check, king c7, queen takes f6. So what do we have? Let me count. Tal is two pawns up and that's something which is giving him great winning chances also. Black king is exposed and white's position is actually winning. Rook c1, bishop a4, of course Tal is rejecting the offer of exchange of rooks because there was a back rank weakness. Rook c1 was played, bishop a4, queen d4. Tal wants to simplify the position, but black is rejecting. And meanwhile Tal is intensifying the pressure. Rook e6, well, queen b6 could prolong black's resistance, but even in this case black has no chance to save the game. In our game we have rook e6, and the problem with this move is that after queen c4 check, black is suffering heavy losses. You can't move away your king and put it on d7, thus protecting the rook on e6 because this is stepping into a pin and by going for knight c5 check black is losing more material. That's why in our game after queen c4 check we have a resignation. Another brilliant sacrificial game by Tal which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. In the end a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. I hope that you can find the shortest mating line and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. That's actually a very easy task. In the end here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.